Hello, my name is Eric Beard. Tonight we're going to discuss integrated training and the approach that the National Academy of Sports Medicine takes to integrated training. There are many different components of an exercise routine that have been found to be very effective, either by looking at evidence-based information and research over the years or just through empirical data. We know there's certain things that people need to do to help them get where they want, whether that's to lose weight, improve their overall health, or increase or enhance their athletic performance. We know that flexibility and warm-ups are an important part of an exercise program, as well as core training. Balance training in recent years has a significant amount of data or information around it pointing to the benefits of it. Reactive training or plyometric training, speed, agility, and quickness training, as well as resistance training and a cool down. NASM would quantify those as the seven components to a workout where you'd adjust the warm-up. During the warm-up, you'd adjust flexibility and potentially a cardiorespiratory component to core training, three, balance training, four, reactive or plyometric training, five, it'd be more of an optional approach. Perhaps you do some speed, agility, and quickness training with someone. Then you'd have six as resistance training, and seven is the cool down. During the cool down, you'd perform some low to moderate activity, cardiorespiratory activity, and then flexibility again. The looking at the different aspects or components of a program and trying to figure out what are the best variables or approaches to use when performing these components of an exercise program. Due to the sedentary society that we live in in the United States and that's glowing, growing globally as we, as we sit more and more and more throughout the world, we're seeing a predisposition for musculoskeletal injuries. There's the adage that physicians are telling us to exercise more, uh, so when people are having these morbidities, these comorbidities that are risk factors, uh, typically related to obesity, we know that if someone exercises and modifies their food intake program, it will bring down their risk factors for several of these health care issues, whether it be uh, heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, it goes on down the line. But when we take this individual who has been sedentary for 20 or 30 or 40 years, that is 20 or 30 or 40 pounds overweight, and we begin to have them exercising with their poor posture, poor muscular imbal their muscular imbalances, and oftentimes an inappropriate program, we know that injuries result. So NASM has tried to provide a systematic approach to getting a client to any goal, to thoroughly assess the individual, understanding where they are in the relationship towards their goal, and build a program that's evidence-based to get them there. The model that they use is called the Optimum Performance Training Model, the OPT model. There's a staircase approach or a visual representation of this. At the bottom of the staircase focuses mostly on stabilization, improving posture, alignment, coordination, and control. There's a specific type of training or phase of training held within that block of the OPT model. The next block of the model is the strength level. There are three different phases of training held there, and each of these phases has a different set of acute variables. We'll come back to acute variables towards the end of the video. In the strength level of the OPT model, we're focusing on improving, increasing the volume and intensity of the work that's being done. We're moving external load repeatedly, A to B. This is where some of you more traditional styles of working out, as well as some of your hybrid and more progressive styles of working out will be held as well. And then there's the power block or the power level of the OPT model that has only one phase. And we're working on improving or enhancing rate of force production, moving explosively. This isn't just for athletes, people in everyday life who need to step up off of a curve or throw a snowball or move out of the way of a cab or try to catch something that's falling off the counter. We do need to move quickly in everyday life. Some of the subtleties as far as differences go between these five phases are selecting specific exercises that uh, lend themselves to each of these five phases or within the three levels of the OPT model. More importantly, we're going to examine the acute variables. Based on the law of specificity or the said principle, specific adaptation to impose demand, we know that if we apply a specific demand to the body for long enough, there will be an adaptation. If you've, if you've ever run or jogged before, if you haven't jogged or run for a while and you get out that first day, it's fairly difficult as well as the second day because you're usually a little sore by there. But just for example, if you were to jog a mile a day for a week, by the end of that week, around that sixth, seventh, eighth day, that mile would be easier. And if you wanted to make it more challenging, you could run for a greater distance or, for, or go for a faster speed two ways to progress that. So we know when we manipulate the acute variables, we get different results. And there's enough research on these variables to be very clear on what it is that we're going to get as far as adaptations go. The acute variables are sets, uh, repetitions, rest period, tempo, 
intensity and intensity oftentimes when it comes to resistance training is just the percentage of someone's one rep max or the weight they're going to use and you can also start to look at duration of someone's workout whether that's a resistance training workout or a cardiorespiratory training workout you can look at the frequency of the workout again for a cardiorespiratory training cardiorespiratory training workout or for a re resistance training or integrated uh, type training program. So we know by adjusting these variables in a systematic and progressive manner, we can bring someone slowly from where they are up towards their goal. We would like to adjust or modify these variables on a semi-regular basis. We know that manipulating them uh, frequently will provide different adaptations or shocks or sometimes you hear the uh, the concept of muscle confusion that's thrown out there in some of the advertisements for programs for home exercise programs now that's fine it makes a lot of sense it's once we start to adapt our body becomes more efficient let's change the stimulus our body must provide another adaptation from there that allows us to continually and systematically get any client towards any goal by adjusting the acute variables by changing the styles of exercise that we're using in a systematic manner. The challenge is we want to match someone's assessment to their program on that point and move them up from there. Far too frequently people will begin by doing too much or the wrong type of programming or poor technique and they won't make it past six weeks of exercising. We've looked time and time again at the rate of musculoskeletal injuries for beginners and it's getting worse, not better. There are more personal trainers, there are more health and fitness facilities, there are more resources on, resources on the internet to find out what to do, but the challenge is, is the systematic approach isn't being taken. There's not an assessment to really understand where someone is, the execution of the individual isn't there, and they're not brought along progressively. They typically do too much, too soon of the wrong thing and the result is not good. That discourages people from sticking with their exercise program after all. You know, after all, pain is a is a great deterrent, especially for most people that don't like exercise, which is really most of the society that we live in today. So responsibilities that we have as a health and fitness professional to truly understand where someone is, what their goals are, what makes them tick, and how they and how they can best get there, and continually adjust and manipulate their program to keep their mind changing, their nervous system challenged, their musculoskeletal system challenged, and keep them moving towards their goal on a regular basis. So that's a that's a nutshell version of integrated training from the National Academy of Sports Medicine. We're going to do a few more videos here that are going to talk about the different components with some more detail. Thanks for watching.